Uh, my name is Anil Sahani. I work for the RICS, and I'm very happy to welcome you today to this uh, wonderful inaugural 2019 uh, Construction Technology Symposium. Thank you for being here. I think we are going to have a wonderful day uh, filled with conversations that are really uh, very exciting for me personally. Uh, <clears throat> What we'd like to do is uh, get started with our keynote today. So on behalf of RICS, I'd like to welcome you all. Uh, RICS has worked very closely with Columbia University to have this uh, inaugural event, which will be an annual event. And my colleague Francisco from Columbia University and his team has been just wonderful in getting this started and putting the key ideas together. Um, <coughs> And there are several colleagues who have helped us along the way. So the idea today is to discuss technology talent and how it's applied in the construction sector. I have attended several symposiums, conferences, uh, in which the primary focus is technology. But we wanted to do something different. Sitting at an academic institution, we wanted to really talk about value. We wanted to talk about how the actual implementation takes place. Uh, I am also guilty of doing lots of pilots and lots of exemplar projects, but we really want to have a discussion where all the key stakeholders come together and discuss from the point of view, how do you deliver value by utilizing technology and talent together? So to begin with, I'd like to thank our supporters and sponsors. Uh, Gardner and Theobald and their, our colleagues here, we'd really like to thank you for supporting this event. Thank you. <laughs> and these are the key players who have helped us along the way, some of our event supporters. Um, and you will probably interact and meet with them during the day. And I again want to thank you uh, for helping us make this inaugural event a reality. So at this time, I'd like to introduce my colleague who's going to take the show forward. Uh, just to tell you, there are several people here from RICS. In fact, some people uh, from the UK who have traveled. So I'm sure you will interact with them. Just don't bring up the topic Brexit right now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Francisco, who's running the show here, the construction management program. Francisco, if you'd like to come and say a few words. Thank you, Anil. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Um, please do bring up the Brexit thing. It'll make it for a much livelier conversation, uh, especially following yesterday's debate. Um, I sort of reimagined today's setting much like yesterday's debate. So uh, what I promised all of our panelists, I, I'm sorry, I don't think we're going to be able to maintain that civility. But um, thank you, Anil, and thank you uh, also to Renee Sachs and the diversity agenda and Sachs Communication. I also want to thank uh, our team, John Parkinson uh, and Michelle Trezino and the RICS team for making this happen. I feel very awkward when I, when I stand behind a podium, so I'm going to grab the mic. Um, we're already over budget on this, so I'm going to be brief and try and keep us on time. <clears throat> we, I do want to uh, echo what Anil said. There's a lot of conferences, and most of the thing that we're seeing on the tech side is uh, is, is, is led by the, the venture capital end of it, uh, or at least very little of this is being uh, pushed forward by the GCs, the owners, and to some extent, much of the leadership's coming from the software developers and providers. What we wanted to do is situate this conversation in what is a really, really dynamic market. It's the largest in the US from a metropolitan standpoint, not necessarily regional. It is one of the largest in the world, and uh, you know, at least from where I sit, uh, I think it's really one of the most uh, exciting in terms of the materials, means and methods, some of the stuff that we're doing. Um, so I thought, you know, in conversation with Anil and some of our other alumni and colleagues, that it might be a good uh, and timely way to start bringing us all together and talk about this from the owner standpoint, talk about this from the designers, the engineers, the architects. Uh, we've been the field guys who are always forgotten for some reason. We got Robert Kipp here, who's uh, very much been at the forefront of this and, and the youngest general super of a mega project in the nation. Um, so I actually have to thank him for bringing many of us together as well over the last year 
uh, year and a half. Um, and lastly, how that all kind of bubbles up into the project delivery. Um, and that's the way this session is structured. If, if you look at the programming, the idea was to touch on all of these and hopefully towards the end, uh, bring in some of the consultants that are advising, that are working across the spectrum to deliver these projects. Um, not, not just efficiently, but to learn off of what incremental benefits we're gaining from technology and how that's interfacing and that socio-technical interface with uh, the people and the talent, how we're developing that talent, next generation of talent. Uh, with that, I would love to uh, introduce uh, Denise Berger, the fellow of the uh, American Institute of Architects. Um, she is a particularly impressive individual, uh, has led uh, very much uh, the, I would say, uh, conscious uh, uh, effort to modernize how we're thinking about this from the owner's side. She has built a, an extraordinary team and continues to build a team at the Port Authority. Um, and so much of our learning happens between our relationships, uh, contractual relationships and personal relationships. And, I, uh, and we thought she would be a, a great person to come and share with you uh, her approach uh, and what her team has done on the construction tech side. Denise? Let me get this. Hi. So thanks, Francisco. Thank you for um, having me here today. Thank you, Anil. Thank you to the um, Columbia University and to the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveys um, and for hosting this Reimagined Inaugural Construction Symposium, which I think is really a good topic to discuss. Um, I'm delighted to be here. Um, many of you, it's no secret that infrastructure and our built environment is changing. The impact of the recent technological advancements has been nothing short of transformative. Um, could everyone hear me? Am I good? Okay, great. Next slide. So let me tell you a bit about the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey so that I can put the needs, opportunities, and impacts into perspective. The Port Authority is a unique, multi-modal, bi-state, New York and New Jersey agency established in 1921, which owns, builds, and operates some of the world's busiest transportation facilities in the world, which serves as vital gateways for hundreds of millions of people. As you can see from the Port Authority map, most of these facilities are within a 25-mile radius of Statue of Liberty. So how many of you flew in today? Okay, so you hopefully you use one of our airports, um, Newark, LaGuardia, JFK, and you see, you'd probably see all the redevelopment that's going on right now. Um, we have PATH, the rail transit system. Um, we have tunnels and bridges. So for most of you, terminals, most of you probably traveled through one of our facilities today. Okay. Um, so the Port Authority, the, can we go to the next slide? Port Authority's 10-year capital plan is $32 billion, which is, which is enormous. And many of you in the audience may be working on some of these projects. Uh, our 2019 budget is almost $9 billion. And looking at this slide, you could see some of the great work that we're working on. We have the George Washington Bridge, Restore the George Program. We just completed the Gothels Bridge. We're working on Path Harrison Station. As, as I just mentioned, there's the LaGuardia redevelopment, JFK redevelopment. So we have a, a lot of work. We just raised the Bayonne Bridge to, to um, get more of the container ships coming in um, for our ports. So we're doing a lot of work out there. Next slide. So. Um, as many of you know, we've been in the papers a lot recently. We have a great new executive director, Rick Cotton, and um, Chairman O'Toole. Uh, and we're looking at, our mission is keep the region moving. So what does that mean? So we have priorities that we're working with. So we're, we have a new, renewed set of priorities, and the agency is focusing on the following priorities, which include safety, security, capital plan, customer experience, operational excellence, sustainability, and employee of choice. So why do I mention these? Because look at the bottom, our standards, and what do I have circled? 21st century technology. That is really important, and that's important to the governors, and it's important to the executive director, and it's important to the uh, chair, Kevin O'Toole. And one of the ways we meet and leverage these priorities as an agency is by optimizing the technological advancements in design construction and project delivery. So this is really not just on the forefront of my desk, but this is at the forefront of the agency. That's how important this is. So opportunities. Let's look at the advancements we're bringing about. New ways to optimize project delivery 
increase productivity, efficiencies through design and construction process, and what does that achieve? Best outcomes for the clients, better quality, greater reliability, faster delivery, and higher safety standards. And I don't have to, I'm talking to an audience who knows this, so you're probably saying, I know this. And I know that you know this. So what I want to talk about is the next slide. So think about this. Uh, take a look at the company's logos on these slides, right? These companies didn't exist, what, 10 years ago? However, to many of us, they have transformed the way we do business and the, the way we live today. So how many of you have used one of these, these logos or have used one of these companies? How many have used more than one? Two? Three? A lot, right? Think about it. I mean, you know, if you think about it, it's so funny. Think about me as an architect. I started 30 years ago. 30, I'm giving up my age. People were still using slide rulers, OK? Uh, I was using a drafting board. Th there was no computer. There was no auto AutoCAD. There was no BIM. And look at the way we are today. So engineering construction outlook. Next slide. So reports from the American Society of Civil Engineers give the country a D rating, indicating that the current infrastructure's poor condition and deteriorating levels. What would help the cities is clearly articulated strategy for leveraging advanced technologies like the Internet of Things, analytics, and artificial intelligence. For example, digital technologies like robotic process automation can make significant impact on the back office operations for engineering construction firms. Engineering construction firms generally experience prolonged cash conversion cycles and financial constraints, including longer average days, sales outstanding of 82 days or more. These operation, operational areas have many processes that can be significantly improved through RPA. So we just did something similar at the Port Authority. Not robotics, but automation in terms of invoices. Our invoices were outstanding 114 days. We turned it around in 21 days by looking at, look up, looking at processes, uh, streamlining, and automating. So it, it can be done. Um, in addition, building the information modeling BIM systems that allow contra uh, contractors to create th 3D models and make immediate changes for designs today and evolving quickly with the inclusion of cost and project scheduling to add more than two dimensions. And then look at 5D BIM systems can help bring projects in on time and on budget, limiting potential overruns, a key driver to operational efficiencies with larger construction projects. And then data. Right? We're looking at data as quickly becoming the core of, for future success in the, in the construction industry. It moves businesses and decisions from reactive to predictive. And that could enable engineering construction firms to outpace their comp competition. Um, so it's really interesting that, and, and in me as an owner, to be predictive and, and not to be reactive. Um, and, but we have a challenge because is the talent out there the latest job openings data from the Bureau of Statistics suggests that in 2014 that the number of jobs openings have almost doubled. And the number of qualified hires over the same period has increased 14%. But there's a shortage for us to find the people who could take on these jobs. And that's one of the things that we as an industry that we have to deal with. Finally, expect disruption to continue. When a space exists in a market or a sector, we should expect a new entrant to fill that void. We should be embracing the new talent and capability to help us solve the problems that are literally starting us in the face, that's staring us in the face. Customers want a frictionless experience. Think about this, the largest taxi firm in the world owns no cars, Uber, right? One of the biggest lodging firms in the world owns no hotels, Airbnb. So we have to think differently. And, and we, I'm not talking about you, probably me. I'm probably one of the only owners here. We have to think differently. So next slide. So we need to be ready to embrace these innovations to, in order to remain competitive, attract talent, provide transparency, and keep the region moving with world-class, smart infrastructure. Many of these innovations are here and now. Our role is to scale up what's working and then look to reinvent and what we do to prepare for the next horizon of innovation beyond the current here and now. 
So this is my fa one of my favorite slides. So look where construction is on the bottom. So basically, this was a McKinsey report. And basically, it says globally, we improve productivity through technology. However, as you can see from the heat map chart, construction industry is lagging behind technology, innovation investment, and most recent digitalization. The study went on to say that historically, the construction and infrastructure sectors have suffered from lack of productivity, poor specification requirements and management, and unrealistic budgets and schedules. That fragment, the fragmented nature of the industry compounds these problems and creates multiple interfaces by consistency of working is extremely difficult to achieve. And, and I, I, I see this every day at the Port Authority. People have different systems. There's lack of transparency. Um, I think people want to hold information. And it's really hard if, when you talk about repository because we have to retain our information for many years to, to get it all together and be able to, to, to file it and, and go back and, and use it. Um, think about you know, going back, to, especially for us, given the, the fact that our headquarters were destroyed in 9-11 and we had to rebuild all the drawings and some of the drawings we still don't exist. And then we're trying to file, we have new drawings and naming and security. So trying to create the transparency that's needed and, and, and not have all these fragments and silos of people working in Excel spreadsheets are really important. Next slide. So going back to the, uh, one of my early slides, the agency's mission is to keep the region moving. Like a key component is the customer experience. So do we need a new service design to ensure that internal and external customers' needs are met? We need to put our customers at the center of our products. A simple example of this is we use analytics and data to inform us on traffic patterns to help augment congestion at our facilities. Think about data. We can, the next one, there we go. So data would be the, at the center of our design and our decision making. We need to move away from subjective and opinion-based decisions, make, making to one that is objective and supported by evidence. The data will hold about our assets, will provide new insights that are previously impossible to generate. The use of quantum computing will enable computers to make hundreds of thousands of decisions in time it takes a human being to write the instructions to a supplier. Ecosystems, no single partner has the knowledge and capability required, and platforms. BIM is building more widespread as a platform. It's shaping the way we manage a project's life cycle. For our agency, like ourselves, where our assets are spread far and wide, the use of GIS is critical. Platforms like business intelligence is helping us generate faster insights into our projects, and will continue to improve the way we report and manage our projects. Next slide. So we also must not lose sight of the importance of the type of talent, the culture, and technical experience the industry will need to grow, mitigate risk, and increase profits. In order to get there, our industry needs to change the paradigm. We need to harness the institutional knowledge of our senior skilled architects, en engineers, and construction managers, and recruit the recent graduates to help develop the right mix of traditional and digital skills to to create the best environment for the future. The conversation about the future job skills is one of the most important in education. A student entering formal education today will be making decisions about their career by 2030. But wait, we already know about the future jobs. The, ro the, ro the robots are taking them, right? So let's take a step back. Anxiety about work is being replaced by technology is rampant but a fear of automation is nothing new. Fears of technology-driven unemployment have risen throughout the centuries using provoked by a disruption like the Industrial Revolution. But historically, technology creates more jobs than it destroys. And of course, we don't know it to be different this time. Next slide. So with the recent technology advancements, the industry has pushed forward through creative applications of existing tools and by inventing new ones. According to Boston Consultant Group, 10 of the most promising technologies are prefab and modular construction, advanced building materials, 3D printing and additive ma manufacturing, autonomous construction, augmented reality and virtualization, big data and predictive analytics, wireless monitoring and connected equipment, cloud and real-time collaboration, 
3D scanning, and building information modeling. And I'm, I'm proud to say about half of the, the, the 10, or five of the ones that the Port Authority is currently using, and we're looking to go in this direction. So design should become, in using this technology, design should become simpler um, to build and operate and contribute to more cost-effective solutions that meet the needs of our customers. Modern methods of construction are here now, but their implementations have been restricted through lack of investment. We know that large real estate companies and new entrants like WeWork look to constantly evolve the designs and workplace to meet the evolving needs for the customer. We also know that standardization and computation design helps design and delivery. So imagine the future where all the requirements, business drivers, resources, and data from the external environment are plugged into one armed bandit machine and the most optimal solution is presented and designed for us. Wouldn't that be neat? So now let me show you the various ways we are using technology in architecture, construction, engineering. So um, the case study, building information modeling. The primary goal of the BIM 456 program initiates is to expand the virtual design and construction, VDC, practices at the PA across the full project life cycle in order to increase quality, efficiency, and productivity. The long-term objective is to move beyond our current 2D and occasional 3D CAD applications to incorporate innovative 4D time, 5D costs, and 6D post-construction facility management. So BIM processes and technologies is to com complement, leverage, and improve existing technologies to achieve major quality and productivity improvements. So this 4D model of Terminal 1 provides a simulation that allows the team to model and view different variants of the construction process. The tools allow the teams to rapidly evaluate the status and options accurately. We look at schedule management, 4D look ahead schedules showing upcoming activities that should be taking place. And you can see it's 30, 60, 90 day forecast. And uh, schedule analysis provides a detailed monthly analysis on the contracted schedules for activity completion, earned value, planned actual completion, and production rate analysis. So what you're viewing is a simulation of a 4D model of Terminal 1 at Newark International Airport. The video goes through the entire duration of the program within three minutes, which is the direct vis visualization of the integrated program schedule. The 4D is highly effective communication method for Newark Terminal 1, as particularly powerful for engaging the project stakeholders and is increasingly being used as a communication tool on PA projects. And BIM provides the possibilities to explore, interact, and develop from different angles at different times of day, providing an instant sense of scale. So this slide is the age of big data. This shows now a wealth of information available on performance of assets. The ability to interpret and optimize the use of data is making difference for us at the PA. 60 empowers our facility departments bringing our line departments is what we call them, to make data-driven decisions to better manage our assets and forecast asset deterioration effectively. Through visualizing the georeference data, the tool supports engineering's insight to determine the underlying factors that contribute to the asset's performance. This leads to more effective maintenance and the ability to spot issues, helping us keep assets operational. So let me explain to you. So we have over 600 projects, okay, in the capital plan. So think about this, we have four line departments, right? We have rail, path, aviations, and tb and And everyone is saying that they need their projects to, to go forward into the capital plan. So how do you prioritize that, right? So we have a prioritization pr a program, what we use, but we need to understand the assets. And like what I was saying, getting back, it can't be subjective on someone's opinion. So this tool allows us to understand the asset deterioration so that when we say we want to put something into our, our capital plan, it's not someone ha having their own pet agenda that they want to move forward on a certain project. We could say, hey, we have to level the playing field. This asset, let's say, in, in path is more deteriorated than maybe, let's say, a, a, a something on, on one of the bridges, okay? Um, so let's look at laser scans. For renovations or additions to existing structures such as the Path Grove Street Station, drawings are often extremely out of date or simply don't exist. They don't exist because they were, most of them were destroyed. Um, this makes designing any type of renovation or addition extremely difficult for us. So laser scans located uh, whatever it sees and freezes the site and time in its current form. So the data was brought into CAD and we used it to develop extremely accurate existing um, condition drawings. 
So once the documents were created, laser scannings continued to add the value by capturing construction milestones and providing quality assurance as the um, project uh, progresses. Next, we're looking at the Port Authority bus terminal. We're pushing the boundaries of digital surveying, using the latest scanning to capture data that can be processed and analyzed to create 3D models for design and construction. This technology also facilitates surveys of large, complex sites quickly and safely. So the bus terminal was laser scanned as part of a study to analyze pedestrian flows in public areas of terminals. And actually, Rutgers University was the prime contributor to putting this laser scan together. So we're also using uh, VR as a, has been a highly effective communication method for Stewart um, Airport, the terminal expansion project. It's been powerful for engaging the project stakeholders. It's the high quality visualization. Um, it, it's immersive environment, allows design and construction teams to experience complex schemes and better understand the project while communicating technical developments to the stakeholders. And this fosters a good collaboration and, str and strengthens the trust between the disciplines and, and the um, client. So keeping ahead and looking to the future. Our approach to BRIM, a prelude to virtual design and construction, and our wider approach to digitalizing our capability commences with us understanding what our service looks like. How do we deliver projects? How do we interconnect with many stakeholders that we work with? Scale up existing capabilities and identify new methods for delivery. Some of the new technologies that we are looking at are geospatial technologies, artificial intelligence, machine learning, additive ma manufacturing, augmented re reality. So let's look at geospatial and GIS, keeping ahead. So this digital map shows a valuable tool for improving project communications, better informing project stakeholders, and providing critical information to the spatial context. At the Port Authority, a GIS model was developed for the New York and New Jersey region to study environmental impacts of development, addressing ta traffic congestion, and the resiliency, particularly against flooding. And big data was essential for the study. It added value by creating a single source of information for the entire region through the life cycle of the study. And it was informative. Next, looking at traffic patterns. So preparing our infrastructure for enhanced mobility, a lot of you have read about autonomous vehicles, high-speed communication networks, and advanced traffic management systems are required. A core piece of transportation network and agencies must equip their streets and freeways with ITS. We need to develop smart infrastructure and using geospatial technology. And this is really important. Think about this. We're designing airports for, for you know, right now, which will be operating uh, in the next few years. And some of the, some of the technology isn't even developed yet. I mean, when we were, when we were looking at LaGuardia, we, Uber wasn't even in existence. So you have to start looking at how the traffic patterns will be different. Right, because the whole mindset of people getting to an airport or taking an air train is different. So we have to keep ahead and look at artificial intelligence and machine learning. So near field communication chips enables assets uh, communication. One popular form is the NFC technology and the radio frequency. This is used extensively in logistics and retail manufacturing. So how do we start using these kind of equipment uh, and in BIM, and how do, how do we use this in, in buildings, and this is some of the things that we're looking at. So also, this is one of my favorite slides. So this is NASA. So I'm not sure how many of you know this, but they held a $3.5 million competition to build a 3D printed habitat for deep space exploration. So I'm not sure if you can see it, but um, look at the scale. So this is a person, right? And this is a person. Isn't that be neat, what they're trying to do? So the creating sustainable houses solutions beyond the earth and beyond, and I think it's amazing. And these are some of the things that we should be looking at in our industry. Additive manufacturing creates sustainable low energy and long term and maximal life cycle value. It helps take serious actions to deliver tangible social and economic benefits in short and long term by building energy performance being a key priority in our area, green architecture. And it covers a market that's concentration in terms of raw material, organic, and renewable insulation materials. This is the next wave of materials that we should be looking at. So, um, so keeping ahead, smart infrastructure. So we should be looking at smart technologies, and many of you heard about smart cities. So as you can see from my presentation, 
technology is being interjected more directly into our lives. Smart technology has been key to the Port Authority, putting instant information about paths, transit systems. You'll see um, instant information, uh, traffic alerts, safety alerts in our regions, and it puts it into millions of people's hands. So this technology allows us to make better decisions, enables us to have a better quality of life. So in summary, what we're looking at is training retain and retraining people. It's really important. Artificial intelligence and automation will change most jobs. The workforce will be very different, and co quantum computing will redefine our productivity. So in closing, as our mission is keep, keep the region moving, how do we ensure that this is achievable and the demographics change, populations increase, and people's roles and profiles change. With the ongoing development of the hyper Hyperloop and the travel speeds that will provide, will Philadelphia now become a suburb to New York City? And how do we deal with that? So I just want to thank you. These are some of the things that we're looking at. And um, I hope you enjoyed my presentation. <laughs>